Today's show is brought to you by Gamefly.com. Sign up for a free, premium, 30-day trial and get one game. All you got to do is go over to GameflyOffer.com slash NerdCave and get any game you want. Any game. That's How many out. games? One. One at a time. 30 days. Now, if you're fast at finishing games, you might can squeeze two out in that month. You don't have to keep it after that 30 days, though. So... Go over to GameflyOffer.com slash NerdCave and sign up today. And they're always giving, like, you know, discounted prices yeah. on, on games, too. So it's not just renting. You can buy. Yeah. yeah, you can do all of that. So what's up, everybody? This is Zach here with the Nerd Cave Podcast, joined along with... Robbie Rawls. Today is episode 218. We're just churning them churning out. Churning them out. Now, last week, had to put a caveat out here. We didn't have an episode. Everybody was like, what's going on? Where's the episode? I'm like, chill. Chill, my children. Winter is coming. Yes. Just and like this episode. It, it, is, it is here. Fall is here first. Winter <laughs> will come soon. Uh, last week, Sunday of the last week, you usually record this on a Saturday or Sunday. Me, you, Derek, and Allie sat mm -hmm. down for a very long time and cranked out a ton of Let's Plays. Yes. Because if you don't know... We're now putting out weekly Let's Plays. These are multiplayer Let's Plays where all four is a, it's a couch couch co-op. Couch co-op. Co co co-op. And you can go check those out over on the gaming channel. I'll put a card up here so you can check that out. Um, and they're awesome. Last yeah. week was That's You. Mm -hmm. This week is Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. A ton of fun. It was. So you can go check that out. And if you're a lover of Let's Plays... All you got to do to get it early is go over to patreon.com slash nerd. Mm -hmm. Just like you can get this podcast early as well. How do you do that? Patreon.com slash nerd. Oh, you ask what you shall receive my son. Patreon. You're more like a brother, but it's okay. Is yes. yes. <laughs> it's like a subscription box, but it's yeah. on the internet. You can get some physical things, but you got to pay a little bit more for it. So, as you see right now, here is our patron, Patreon. We've got nine right now. We've got goals. Like, we've, we're one away from having a community game night every month. One away. That's it. The next one, we start giving away codes for games. You I mean, know, that's our next goal is 35 patrons. So you can see over here, we've made some changes. Mm -hmm. We've changed some things, some things, things, as my granny would say, some things. Not really. She doesn't sound like that at all. <laughs> like, sound like it, but okay. Each and every week, we're going to be doing a live stream of the Nerd Cave podcast. Yes. But here's the caveat. you got to be a patron to get that live stream. Mm -hmm. Now, we will have one that is for everybody. Like we do every month, we'll have one that's for everybody. But the other ones, the other three weeks in the month, we'll say, hey, guys, we're recording this time. We'll have it on Patreon. All you got to do is put that dollar down, and then we'll put the link when we get ready to go live just for them, just for the people that are supporting us at that dollar level or higher. Yeah, and what's great about it, it's like you said, it is just a dollar. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know... I think my mom's doing a dollar or mm -hmm. some, something. It doesn't matter what you can do. It's just just help us. I mean, yeah. help help because what you're doing is people see oh we have this many you know patrons. He's let me check this out. So yeah. you're you're helping spread the word. Yeah. So with that dollar, you also get early access to shows like the Let's Plays. Mm -hmm. Anytime I do a top five, patrons get that first dibs on that. Any stuff like that, you get early. If you scroll on down, you get early access to the audio version for $5 of the podcast, $10 for the video, uh, thank yous on air, all of that sort of stuff. And then we go from there, naming the credits, uh, personal thank you videos every three months because we're not going to dedicate every month, fan mail, um, that's really hard to, three on one Skype calls, producers, we got a producer. We do. I'm going to be the seducer, though. Mm. So go over to patreon.com slash nerdcave. Sign up. Just like Abu did. And Caleb. And Nick. And Adam. And Amy. And your mom. All of them. Yeah, all of them. You can go over there. 
support us one away from community game nights so if you love those community game nights people are like oh we need to do more of those they're fun they are i love them just need <laughs> don't have a ton of time but you know we had that 10 we had those 10 patrons we'll do it we'll yep. do it to it all right so there you go guys go over to patreon.com throw us that dollar make us holler ah we holler loud for a dollar you heard it here I first. Said we. You heard it here first. I said we. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you haven't been here in a while, we've changed some things. We have. Everything's going great. So let's jump into it. The Flash. Grant Gustin. Gustin Gustin. Grant Gustin. Gustin. I had it right the first time. Promises. And you better keep to this promise. Or I'll hurt him. <laughs> a return to the show's fun roots in season four. So, if you watch season four... I am probably about three episodes away from finishing. Okay. So, there's a spoiler in here, but I'm going to avoid the spoiler. I would also suggest not reading this highlighted text if you don't want the spoiler, okay? So, in an interview, the Flash star Grant Gustin has addressed where the show went wrong and promises that Barry will undergo something of a personality change when the finally returns. That was always the goal for our show, was we, we were going to be the lighter, funnier show. And you know, sometimes storylines just take you where they take you. I think it's just because all the time travel that Barry Allen did and all the repercussions it had, it took down, us down the Flashpoint Road, if you will. Uh, skipping past the spoiler. Uh, so we're going to get back to our roots a little bit. And because of the experience in the Speed Force, Barry's able to let go of things and move on. And he's able to help the team move on. And the show can get back to its original roots where Barry enjoys having these powers and has fun. And the whole team has a little bit more fun. I, I'm happy with this because I do feel like it has kind of gone into a Arrow-like seriousness. Yes. Yes. And rightfully so. It's dealing with some yeah, heavy stuff. It, it is. It's heavy, dealing heavy with some stuff. Heavy, yeah. yeah. But Barry Allen in in everything, comics. Always uh, lighthearted. Always lighthearted. Yeah. Always the, the Joker. Yeah. Uh but I do feel like, you know Is he a midnight smoker? Midnight smoker. All right, never mind. Getting off that song. <laughs> but I do feel like you know, obviously, like you said, storylines take us down these roads, mm -hmm. and we kind of have to finish it yeah. out. And you know, with the if you haven't catch watch this season is dealing with it's amazing uh, trying to save Iris, Iris, mm -hmm. uh, and super heavy, uh, and and you see moments of of like a fun, but surrounded by a lot of seriousness, like the musical episode that was fun. Mm -hmm. It was. It was a lot of fun. But I am happy that they're talking about with the next season coming back to the roots of, of Barry Allen being the the funny yeah. superhero. Well, you know, even with season one, you had the reverse Flash. You know, you're getting, you know, it's a it's a heavy hitting villain, but it still had a lot of fun with it. It was yeah. like, it was that kind of overtone with it. The second season, even dealing with Zoom, you still had fun overtones and everything. I loved it. Yeah. Season three. I still really enjoyed it. I think it was some oh, of the yeah. best television out there, but it definitely did get away from the roots that is the Flash and jumped into broody, you know, male superhero. Let me take off my shirt and let Arrow. me do salmon <laughs> ladders <laughs> and all of that kind of stuff. So I, I'm looking forward for them to get back to that. Um, and this season is the first season, like season four, it will be the first season that Barry is not going up against the speedster as the main villain. I I'm excited about that because too much speed can be a bad thing. <laughs> too much speed can be a bad <laughs> thing, everybody. I agree. You know, having the thinker in there is going to kind of like change up the formula a little bit. And I think that's what this needs to keep moving forward. Cause you know, we saw it with arrow. We had, First season, you had just a rich guy that wanted to demolish everything. The second season, you had a super human element to it with Deathstroke. Third season, <laughs> it wasn't that great. Fourth season, <laughs> fifth season, I haven't finished it, but it was been rocky as all get out for me. I got better. Especially yeah. that gun control episode. Lord God, <laughs> it was so bad. It yeah. was like... The most ham-fisted thing ever. But I'm glad to see that they're doing something different. Yeah, because up until this point, it's 
all right, I just need to get it faster so I can be faster than this guy. I need to <laughs> yeah, get, get that speed going. Yeah, man. The skooma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see that happen. Yeah, though. same here. It, it's We've been needing it. It, it. it 100%. Now, speaking of Arrow, speaking of Arrow, one of my favorite characters, Arrow Season 6 breaks Diggle hmm. physically and emotionally. Now, I don't know how much more... Diggle can take. He's already murdered his brother. He's had his child change from a girl to a boy. Not in like a, a <laughs> surgery way, but like the time, the time change yeah. with Flash. Wibbly wobbly. Yeah. Tommy wobbly. Changed some things with the timeline and everything and went from baby Sarah, I think that's what her name mm-hmm. was, to I don't know what the other I kid. I can't remember the kid. <laughs> We're horrible. Baby people. boy guy thing. So uh, he, out of all the Arrow people, I feel like Obviously, it's Oliver who's had the most. Mm-hmm. Thea. Yeah. And then it's Diggle. Yeah. I know Laurel and Sarah had the, you know, I lost my sister. I lost my sister. And it flips yeah. flop. Yeah. But, like, for him to be able to come through all of that and still be John Diggle, what's going to break him? I want, because I know the what happens. At the end of, yeah. of season five, shakes some people, shakes a lot of shakes things. Shakes some people, like baby shaking. A lot of baby shaking. <laughs> so, as reported by CBR, that's comic book resource for the people that don't know, Ramsey, which is David Ramsey, the actor for Diggle, said, We have to break Diggle. I think season six will see Diggle get broken in a way that he hasn't been broken before. Ramsey went on to say the explosion that occurred at the end of season five's finale profoundly affects Diggle emotionally and physically. Apparently the impact that it, this has on the character won't go away immediately and may continue on for quite some time. Ramsey describes Diggle's upcoming arc as something new for the character and one that could be even more life changing than his brother's return from the dead. Diggle's decision to kill him and the death of Laurel Lance. Uh, they go on to talk about how his relationship with, Lila, is it Lila? Lila, right? Yes. Is going to be tested because Argus is hunting down metahumans. And now the new Black Canary is a metahuman. So there's going to be this tension between him and his wife because he's keeping secrets. And there's going to be tension tension Tension. between Team Arrow and Argus. There's usually some tension, but it's it's going to ramp it up. Oh, yeah. It's going to ramp it up past Amanda Waller levels. And that's that's ramping. That's, that's ramping. That's <laughs> that ramping. ramping. Uh, Ramsey also spoke about Diggle's place in the Arrowverse, a world which describes superheroes like the Flash and Supergirl, describing the character as the nuts and bolts guy. Ramsey explains that Diggle's reaction to the world of superheroes is not only humorous, but something that comes from a real place. On top of Diggle's other problems, he's forced to deal with the fact that he has to defend the world in a world where people can move faster than light. That's why I like Diggle. That's why I like him. He's he's the glue. Mm-hmm. He's the glue. He's the Kevin Coelho, if you will, of Team Arrow. There you go. A little shout out to my, my kind of funny friends. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for it. You know. But you're right. Like he is the glue that sticks everybody together. He he the level headed one, and which is what what's making it so crazy is how he's going to be the one to break in the season, and because he's mm-hmm. always been the rock. Like he's always been yeah. telling. Uh, Oliver, you know, get out of your own head. Yeah. But now he's going to be in yeah. his. And, and I, he's also been the one that kind of has redeemed Oliver in places. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be Oliver reversing the roles and being like, come on, dig. Dig deep. Dig, dig, dig your head out of dig your Dig deep. Dig deep. Dig deep. Mmm. Mmm. Now, this franchise has had more problems with it they need to dig deep they need to figure some (laughs) things out here they do they really do dr strange actor mads mickelson might be interested in playing dr doom and noah hawley's movie i'm trying to remember who uh who he is he's the evil guy oh he's the bad guy he was the bad guy yeah mads mickelson has long been a fan favorite choice to play the villainous dr doom on the big screen, and it looks like he might be interested in taking a look at Noah Howley's Holly's planned solo movie. Now, I don't know if you know this. He was actually in the running 
to be in the Josh Trank Fantastic Four. Yep, I read that. But he wasn't in the running for Doctor Doom. He was actually in the running for Reed, Reed Richards, Richards, which is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> really, really weird. So, despite all of that. Yeah. Despite all of that. Uh, this is what he said. It's always interesting. They're experimenting with doing some of the villain stories as well. Let's see if they do that. I'm not familiar with what they've done with anyone yet. They have, they haven't done it with the Joker and they haven't done it with the Penguin. So we'll see what they're doing. So they're making a standalone movie. That's what he's talking about here. Uh, however, it sounds like Doom would have to be written as more than just standard one-dimensional bad guy, which I'm glad. Yeah. Um, for Mickelson to consider taking the role. Well, he says. Well, I hope all the characters have a little more rounded shape in the sense they have two sides of the coin. Yes, they're villains. Hannibal is a baddie, but at the same time, we kind of like him. I think all the characters, goodies or baddies, that's really weird, <laughs> should have a little of both, and I think every character, every actor looks in that in their character. Yeah, I, I'm very happy that they talked about not being a one-dimensional bad guy because Doom is the ruler over uh, what it Vlad... Uh, Latveria, uh, I don't remember. Latveria, Latveria, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's the ruler yeah. of that. So I would kind of like to see, yeah, I would love to see the bad side of him, you know, going up against, you know, superheroes and stuff like that. But I also kind of want to see the dictator, mm -hmm. uh, side of things too, uh, flesh him out a lot because yeah. that's what I like to see is the backstory. Well, if you look at if you look at Game of Thrones, and George R. R. Martin has talked about this several times, that you know, the villains aren't just these inherently evil people. They they're the hero of their own story. So I think if they write Doctor Doom as the hero of his own story, yes, of course, to the outside world he looks evil, but in his mind, he's doing the things that he thinks is a right. hero should do and what is right. And I think if they go that route of doing that, you know, making him interesting, writing him in a way that's not necessarily Game of Thrones-esque, but taking that approach where it's not just always oh, Doctor Doom. Oh, look at him. He's wearing a metal mask or he looks like tinfoil. <laughs> you know, all of that kind of stuff. I think it will make the character more believable yeah. and ground him more because you know go back to game of thrones you've got people that season one you hated jamie lannister you absolutely hated jamie lannister but in season seven now you're kind of like oh. i really like jamie lannister because he's had an interesting character arc yeah very interesting and that's what dr doom needs and i think that could bring back the Fantastic like Four, because that's one of the biggest problems with any superhero movie is their villains are usually just one-sided coins and just kind of just blank slates, just like, they're evil, ha ha ha, I'm a jokester, look and, at this. And, like, and I'm not saying the portrayals are bad, I'm saying the no, writing. The writing it. is bad, like, so far for me, and it's not because it's Thor-related, but up until now, like Loki has been one of the better villains. Oh, because yeah. 100 percent Loki ha you see the good and the bad with Loki. But, it, but because he's low key about it sometimes. Very low key. But <laughs> <laughs> I, but we, we need to see more of that in Marvel, DC, whatever it yeah, is. Anything. Whatever your bad guy is, we have to have good bad guys for these movies to keep working. Yeah. Uh and you know, we saw it Age of Ultron, really big letdown because they had Ultron, which was just this could have been phenomenal yes. bad guy. Yeah. And they they dropped the ball. I, I still enjoyed the movie uh, for the most part. Yeah. But, like, it was still a letdown for the bad guy. But I'm hoping that when they bring, you know, Doctor Doom in, mm -hmm. because he's such an interesting character. Yeah, and you, you look at... Have you watched Spider-Man Homecoming yet? Yes. Okay, so you look at the bad guy that's in Spider-Man Homecoming. And you see the vulture, like you see where he started and why he's at where he mm -hmm. was. It was such a good way to take that character and give him a reason to do these things. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to get wings and I'm going to fly around. Yeah. Da, da, da. You know, it was an actual reason for it and it made it more believable. Yes, it's a man wearing wings and flying around. That's not realistic, but the motivation for him to go bad mm -hmm. was, it was very real. Yes, it was. And that's what we need. Look at Jeff Bridges character in Iron Man one. 
he had a reason to go bad because he didn't want to lose the company. Mm -hmm. You know, but then you look at the guy in Iron Man 2. He's like, I like whips. You know, it didn't really... Whips and chains excite him. Yes, exactly. So. (laughs) Yes. I need to put that guy's face on my hands. (laughs) But that's that's our cry. Give us good villains. Yes. Give us good villains. It helps. It helps the movie. It helps sell the movie. Yeah. And you you look at... Look at Ramsey Bolton. Hated him. Mm-hmm. Everything about it. Look what they're doing with Inhumans. They're trying to ride his coattails on him being a hated villain. And that show is going to be awful. Just putting that out there. Not. I've already put it out there. And that is my prediction. It is going to be the worst thing that has been come out of Marvel since Howard the Duck. Oh, Lord. So, moving on. Today's podcast. The show. Everything that goes with it is brought to you by Loot Crate. Now, if you haven't heard of Loot Crate before, it's amazing. You get a little box, get all the goodies inside. They got themes every month. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, oh, you like Star Wars? Oh, well, good. Here's a Star Wars Loot Crate. We got, you know, not just Star Wars, we got Firefly. We got this, we got that. Oh, you like fantasy stuff? We got Lord of the Rings. We got Game of Thrones. We got insert other fantasy thing right here. Literally everything you could want. Like, all fandoms are represented in Loot Crate. Like, you know, like you said, this week it could be Marvel. Next week it could be Game of Thrones. It could be something anime. I mean, literally. Mm -hmm. I remember one I got, it was Game of Thrones, Princess Bride, um, Dungeons and Dragons. There's a ton of different stuff. Got an awesome Power Ranger shirt one time. Yeah. You know, it's all this stuff. It's like going to a Comic Con, and they just like shove it in one little box. Yeah, a like, little box. I just re uh, submitted my uh, my subscription back to Loot Crate. Um, there you and go. I'm, I'm very excited because I did it like two days ago, so I should be getting mine this month if I remember correctly, right? Because you have to yeah. get it before the 15th. Before the 19th. 19th. So we'll we'll get so, there. Loot Crate is offering you an opportunity to save 10% on any new subscription to LootCrate.com. All you have to do is enter promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% off. So, every month, it's $20. This first month, you're getting 10% off of that. I'm not a math person. You figure that out yourself. But, you have until the 19th. At 9 p.m. Pacific time to subscribe. And once it's done, Jack, that's it. It's done. You're cut off for that month. Yeah. You'll be getting the next one, but you won't be getting any goodies. All right? I don't think they're ready for this jelly, as Beyonce once said. And I want to say 10%. It's like 23 something after tax. It's going to be about 4 bucks. You get all 4 or $5. Hey, 4 bucks. You can go get you a box of fries from Chick-fil-A. Or if you get the number one, that almost pays for the entire meal. Exactly. Go to breakfast. Get you a biscuit. Yesterday. Oh, nice. I probably did, too. I know I did. <laughs> so, by supporting Loot Crate, you're supporting our channel right here, the Nerd Cave. So you need to go over to trylootcrate.com slash nerdcave and enter code BRIDGE10 to save 10% on any new subscription. Again, trylootcrate.com slash nerdcave enter bridge 10 at checkout no that's all that that's it so there you go now have you ever played the last of us uh, about three hours worth of it you need to get back into it i do like i'm not accepting three hours i know i wouldn't either i, I will murder your family okay because <laughs> the clickers are coming I've dealt with them. Oh, I know. They're coming for you. And as you know, in Walking Dead and Last of Us, the humans are more dangerous than the, than the <laughs> monsters. So you better play the rest of this game. I am. Because there's a rumor out right now. The Last of Us sequel might take place in Seattle, Washington. Now, I'm not a big conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. I like watching theorists about Game of Thrones, you know, hearing little things here, but but I had this this whisper, this whisper from Derek Daniel. He's like, hey, he's like whispering in my ear. I'm like, back off, Derek. <laughs> he's like, well, let me tell you what about this. He sends me this article. I'm like, oh, 
I like this. I like hearing about this because I love Last of Us. So, Naughty Dog has not been particularly like, like, hey out, guys, outgoing. Well, you know, they're, thing, they're yeah. not like throwing out just stuff, which is fine by me. I want them to be quiet about really? it until it's ready to go. But they put out some some art and all of that, and somebody on Reddit, of course, somebody Reddit. on Reddit is going to pick it apart, which I love because it gives us more details. The Last of Us subreddit, however, might have figured out enough details for the game's concept art to figure out that it takes place in Seattle, Washington. A very con convincing post by user Voldsby, V-O-L-D-S-B-Y, I'm assuming that's how you spell it, on the aforementioned subreddit, lays out the argument with pictures of Seattle's various, I'll scroll down here so y'all can see it, various signs and landmarks and finds matching imagery and the art released for the game. The comparisons get so granular that at one point, Voldsby points out the vegetation. I'm talking about the vegetation, the, the flora and the fauna. And the concept art is indigenous to the Western North America, specifically Washington. Hey. I'm, I'm telling you, he went into the weeds. You get, you get me? I did. The vegetation of the and weeds. it's going to be very rainy. It will be. So they haven't put out a release date or anything. But that excites me. That excites me. Somebody's going that deep. Oh, yeah. Digging definitely. up all those things. Digging up all those things. Digging up a whole digging. Because, look, you haven't finished it. I uh, should spoil it right here for you. But that end of the game, pff, it's a big, mind. big moment. It, you know, it was different. Than, I'm not going to compare it to Bioshock. But it was a lot different because it didn't give you a choice. You know, most video games like give you, oh, do you say this or do you say this? Yeah. And big moments, right? They didn't give you a choice. That was big for me. Very big for me. So, can't wait for you to finish it. Let us know what you think about Last of Us 2 taking place in possibly Seattle, Washington. I wonder what it's going to do to the game, though. Like, what is it going to, you know, like, bring into it? Yeah. You know. Who knows? Who knows? Naughty Dog knows. They do. We don't know, though. We have, we have no clue. Now, this excites me beyond all things. You know me. I'm not big into horror games. Oh, yeah. Till recently. Because I scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> but one horror game that I like to play. It's Friday the 13th. And this is big news. Friday the 13th. The game sells... 1.8 million copies. 1.8 million copies. It's crazy. That is crazy. The game that is pretty much, and if you haven't played it, and this is me not knocking it, it needs some work. It's pretty much an early access game right now. Yeah. It's got a lot of work that it still needs to be taken care of. But 1.8 million. That's crazy. It is. So Guns Mania and Ilphonic have announced that Friday the 13th, the game, has sold over 1.8 million copies across all platforms. Plus, a physical release will be available for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions on, you guessed it, Friday the 13th in October 2017. That's awesome. I'm it glad is. they're using that. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, they I'm, have to. I'm yeah. glad it was. I'm glad that up. it actually worked that way. Oh, yeah. I think they were thinking ahead of time. They're like, oh. like we're going to create this game to where it actually everything yes. works out. <laughs> the physical edition will cost $40 and will come with a bloody Jason skin variant for all playable Jason versions and a clothing pack for all playable camp counselors. Wes Keltner, head of Gun Media, said, While things haven't been completely smooth, we definitely feel confident moving forward. The team has grown and we've committed... And we are committed as we work to add more content, more kills, more to do, and of course, the single player component to the game. So, what that tells me right there, that we're fixing, they're selling, they're selling like hotcakes, they're bringing oh, yeah. more people in, they're trying to fix the bugs. They need to fix the bugs. They need to add more maps. We talked about a few weeks ago, the single player component. I'm hoping that happens. I hope it happens soon. Oh, yeah. I think it'll happen at the beginning of next year. That's when we'll get the single player component to it. Because I think by then they'll have a lot of the bugs and kinks yeah. worked out of it. I think to keep the community going and keep people coming back when they boot up their Xbox One, they turn on their PS4, whatever, they turn on their PC. To keep people coming back, though, 
just putting skin packs out and putting out a physical copy, you know, yes, that'll get more people into it, but keep the diehards, the ones that like, ah, double XP weekend's coming up, brah. Mm -hmm. Coming up, man. Yeah. We're going to make some Mountain Dew. And some Doritos. Some Doritos. And let's get some walking tacos. Walking tacos, good, by the way. Just say Walking tacos. I'll tell you in just a second what walking <laughs> tacos is. Now, they've got to put out some new maps. Now, all the maps right now, pretty much the same thing. They got a little different Cabin paint on. Cabin in the woods. Cabin in the woods. You know, I like. Give me like a spaceship. Give me, you oh, know. God. I'm, no. I'm no. kidding. I'm no. kidding. <laughs> no. No. That one was no. <laughs> okay. No. No, no spaceship. spaceship. <laughs> okay. So no Jason Hex here. Had my feeling. <laughs> so give give some people some different things. Clean up the game. They really yeah. need. To, and then I think they should put in a different mode. Like they need to. Do some things with the game to keep people wanting to keep coming back because I love the game. It is a ton of fun. I love like I love streaming it. I love just getting in it when I have, you know, 20, 30 minutes and just play a game and you know, yeah. either I'm Jason. I love being Jason, just murdering people. I call it murder train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a little wink at how I met your mother, murder train song. But anyway, I I'm glad that they're doing this. Like I'm excited that we're getting a physical copy that'll get people that aren't in the digital age that yeah. don't have fast enough internet to download games. Uh, Cause I know that's a big problem. We, I used to be there. there. We've all been be there. there. So I think having the physical copy will bring more people into it. I'm surprised that it's selling this much. You know, if you didn't hear crash bandicoot sold over 2 million copies so far, that's crazy. And that's only on the PS4. Yep. It's so, a, but it's such a beloved franchise. It is. And with Friday the 13th selling this much. I can't wait to see what they do. I can't wait for the single player campaign. I know I talked to a lot of people in the com comments on our um, episode 216, and people are excited for it, and I'm excited for it. I can't wait to just get a hold of it and actually get into it. Yeah. So I'm hoping that around February, that we're going to February, March, we'll get the single player component. I just hope that they keep putting out new things with the multiplayer side of it. They have to. To keep people involved in it, or it's going to go the way of the dinosaurs. And Freddy versus Jason DLC. I know it won't happen. I don't think it'll happen <laughs> either, but... I'm really, ex really excited. Now, Walking Tacos, here's a quick side. Derek's party. I'm assuming you Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Walk. Walk. You, you, did, you, did you get any? Yeah. Yeah. Like the different, yeah. It's so, for the small. for the people out there, you get any kind of chip, really. Doritos, Fritos would be good, too. Crunch them up a little bit. You put your meat in there. You know, your taco meat with the sauce and all that. Try not to get it runny. That would be nasty. But you put it in there and you mix it up and then you get a fork and you just eat it. It's delicious. It's kind of like a Taco Bell dose, you know, nachos, yeah, yeah. cheese, whatever. It's good, though. Trust me. It was very smart. It was very smart. We approve. Yes, we do. Now, I know a lot of people out there are like, this game is going to be the best thing ever. And then there's some people out there. We're still, I'm excited for it, but we're still skeptical about it. Very skeptical about it. And we're going to get in the weeds here a little bit, okay? I'm getting a little weeds in here. Nope. <laughs> there we go. Destiny 2 super abilities were recharged faster than the beta. Bungie has spilled some of the new details on Destiny Super 2 abilities following the recent beta phase, as well as tracking recent talking points and weapon balancing. Uh, they spoke to... IGN, this is Destiny's game director Luke Smith talking. In the wake of the beta, we've made a few changes that will increase super regeneration across the game. So that's good. Yeah. Apparently it was slow. I watched some of the beta stuff. It uh, it takes players a while to build that back up. And, you know, there's times when you definitely need supers in the game to be mm -hmm. able to help take down the big baddies. Yeah. So so it's good to see, there, see that that's... They, you know, they took feedback on there. Elsewhere, Smith also tackled concerns regarding the balance between PvE and PvP weapons and armor. After numerous feedbacks from the beta suggested that things fell off in comparison to the real game. In response, it appears that Destiny's 2 combat will be more cohesive, a more cohesive effort across both types with little differences in both PvE and PvP. In Destiny, you build a character with a bunch of powers, abilities, and we hope a combat rhythm that is consistent across the game. So I like that because yeah. in the in the original game, it felt like it takes forever to kill anything in PvE 
And then when you're in PvP, you die really, really quick. And, like, your armor doesn't mean anything. And you could be, you know... It, you know, I'm glad that they're doing that. Yeah, definitely. But there needs to be a balance. It doesn't need to be this drastic change that's like throwing everybody off because you've got people that have, you know, put like, in a time in this game. And in then the you're time sitting there the and you're shooting them and it's just doing nothing. They're just walking at you and laughing like, <laughs> Pew, yeah. Human. It's like one, 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 just like taking one damage. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. You know it's true because all of them are just bullet sponges. Unlike the original Destiny, your guardian will be silent throughout the campaign, presumably allowing the other characters to deliver dialogue. In addition, Bungie's Mark's Noseworthy, <laughs> Noseworthy. <laughs> said that the studio hopes to provide an HDR update for Destiny 2 at some point down the line. Um, and Destiny 2, of course, is going to be coming out September 6th. I don't care if I, my guy talks at all. Just have me a story. I don't care if the other ones are driving the story. Just have a story. Now, September 6th is the console version. Just want to point this out real quick. And then October, the PC version is going to be coming out. Here, here's my problem. Okay, and I'm going to get into this in the next article in just a second. It seems like they're doing things for the future and not for right now. That's what I'm getting. Okay? That's what I'm getting. They're... They're doing these cutscenes and all that, and other people talk. I like my character to talk, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to feel like my character is involved in the story somehow, other than shooting things. And then they say they're going to do an HDR update down the road. Why isn't it already in the game? Okay? That's where I have some concerns right there. The next article makes me feel even more concerned. All right? And the title of this article says it all. DL Destiny 2 DLC could be as important as the main game Activision says. Why? Because you're get you're the same footsteps you were just in with your previous game, where you had to have all the expansions, and they weren't like, oh, here's your ten dollar expansion. No, it's like forty dollars yeah. each time, and you it adds on to the story, but it was just still stupid. So. We'll get there. We're going to vent a little bit. Let me, oh, yeah. let, me, let me dive into the weeds here, everybody. This is for you if you're a Destiny fan. Because I was once a Destiny fan. I still... I uh, want to be a Destiny ish. fan, but they... I, Activision. Oh, oh Activision. Lord. Destiny 2's expansions are going to be very important for the overall health and success of the shooter, according to the publisher. Activision. Makes sense. you got to keep people involved. I understand that. Starting off... Hernsberg said that a lot of positive signs about Destiny 2. Starting off, Activision believes its game itself. Hernsberg said the publisher has a tremendous amount of confidence in it. We see we received almost universally positive feedback from both the press and fans alike. Adding that continue continuing to close strong. One of the reasons why Activision is so optimistic about Destiny 2 is because they're taking steps to broaden the franchise appeal, Heisenberg said with things like bringing it to PC, localizing it for more countries, and partnering with Blizzard to launch the PC edition through the World of Warcraft company massive popular Battle.net service. I like that. Yeah. So far, so good. He added that pre-orders for Destiny 2 have been very strong. Awesome. Overwhelming high percentage of pre-orders have been for the premium versions. Oh, that's great. And then we keep going. Destiny will be supported multiple expansions after the launch. Okay, so far so good. We're we're going on strong here. While these have yet to be fully detailed, Hirschberg Hirschberg that's a weird name, old Hershey boy, stressed that Destiny 2's expansion content is incredibly important. Alright, so far, feeling alright. You know, a little doubt in my mind. You know, they're worried about pre-orders and all of this. Mm -hmm. Finally, and maybe most importantly with a game like this, Destiny Destiny is so engaging that the follow-on content is almost important, if not as important, as the main game. See, he could be saying, you know, like most games, it's not, you know, as important, but it is important to the game for the continuation. Like Dying Light, the uh, the DLC that you got with it opened up a whole new area. Are you bringing up Dying Light? Do you really want to open that box? No, I don't. Okay, I so here it is. <laughs> Dying Light. Amazing game. It's DLC. Other than the first one, I think. The first one you had to pay for. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
has been free. They're still supporting the game with free DLC. They're yeah. adding to their map for free. You're right. Destiny, on the other hand, Destiny of Vanilla, what I bought into, I paid 60 freaking dollars for. I got hardly anything. There was no story. There was nothing to it. It was just like, shoot this guy, shoot this guy. Oh, that little guy? Now here's a big one of those things. Shoot that a bunch. Okay, you died. Do it again. Do it again. Go patrol the moon. We don't have any content for you. Go patrol the moon. Oh, you got to run around this thing until you shoot this thing enough to kill it. That's ridiculous. It and was. then they put out their first expansion. Oh, oh, $20? Sure, I'll pay 20 No, it's $40. Okay. Oh, well, this makes the game way better. Okay, cool. So I've already paid $100 for this game so far. Oh, next expansion comes out. Oh, well, this has improved the game a lot more. Another forty dollars. That's a hundred. You know, hundred and forty so far on this. I know people have spent over three hundred dollars just to play Destiny, and it took that much money to get a game that should have came out at sixty dollars. And bringing up Dying Light, great point. You probably paid eighty to get the whole game, and they're still supporting it with free, free content. content. This makes me very angry because it's like. We've already planned not to put everything in the first game. We're planning that our DLC will be as important or more important. That's what I'm reading it as because we're not really finished on the game yet. So we're planning out this. Now, they have other studios other than Bungie that are producing this. Uh, I think it's um, real quick. I'll tell you. Vicarious Visions, I trust them, and High Moon Studios are going to be working working on these expansions. But it's telling me right now that the day one game that I buy for $60 is not the full game. Is not the full game. And yes, I'm glad that they're putting out expansions. MMOs need to put out expansions. Games that want to you know, continue to thrive and survive need to put out expansions. But the first game that I get in my hand doesn't need to be the disappointment that Destiny ve uh, the Vanilla first. was. Because that was a disappointment. But... I do think that uh, Bungie has learned a lesson because it, it because I mean, they're going to put it out faster. Because th that because it took almost a year for the first one. But I, I feel say. like what we get the first time around is going to be more full than what we got with Destiny One because they realized they got crapped on so much from Destiny One. Oh, I agree. And uh, I'm going to still crap on them until I, I'm proven wrong. I, I and, and I, hope, <laughs> I hope I hope you are, and I hope it's a great game because it. it it has such potential to be so fun. Mm -hmm. But if it's like anything like Destiny 1 where we have to just keep going and buying these expansions, it's gonna I'm going to be pissed off. It kind of comes down to me for this. I'm going to speak with my wallet. If somebody wants to get me Destiny 2, cool. I'll do it. But I'm not going to go out of my way to play Destiny 2 just because I feel like we're getting spoon-fed so Activision can keep putting money in their coffers. Mm -hmm. I'll buy freaking crash bandicoot because i know all three games are going to be there and it's done it's done i'm going to buy the new batman game because i know once i've you know pay for my season pass i'm going to get all of them yeah destiny i feel like it's it's i can't even say what i'm thinking but it's it's not <laughs> it's that it's not it's not great yeah i i'm glad that they're trying to do something different but it just feels like they're doing half measures and they're they're doing it to get money yeah and not please the gamer and i know that's the problem with you know most of these publishers that they're thinking more of themselves than the people that are consuming the content and everything but i personally don't want to feel like i have to keep shelling out forty dollars each time to keep playing a game that should be from the beginning done yeah i agree so there's sorry for getting on a rant it's all good but when you brought up dying line i'm just like oh and, lord child and, i mean you're right i just i just hope they've learned their lesson i will just leave it at that i hope so too now there is a company that has learned its lesson and that's Very battlefield much. oh yeah new battlefield game in development coming to ps4 in 2018 i'm assuming it means Xbox One as well, PC, all of that. They're not just going to put a battlefront, a battlefield on, a, you know, one, one console. console. No. That's just not going to happen. So don't freak out on that. A new battlefield game is currently in development. Electronics Arts 
boss Andrew Wilson confirmed during a recent investors call. The new shooter is currently penciled in for a 2018 release, with Wilson confirming the project, which remains unnamed, will utilize the Frostbite engine. So, you know, that's everything that runs in EA. If it wants to look good, it's going to run on the Frostbite. So, same thing with Battlefield 1, ran on the Frostbite. Right now, it's unknown which direction the new Battlefield game will take. Battlefield 1 was a huge success, and one... One may assume that EA will take be keen on to follow up on the World War One based shooter. On the other hand, there's a chance that we may see a spinoff entry similar to Hardline or Bad Company. Uh, one thing is for sure, Battlefield will not follow a similar path to Call of Duty in the sense that it won't release on an annual release schedule. This major, this year's major EA game is, of course, Star Wars Battlefront 2, so it's unlikely to see a new Battlefield game every it's more likely to see it every few years, every yeah. couple of years. Which is, is good because yeah. there's so much content with Battlefield 1 right now that, I mean, I feel like I can keep going on it. Yeah. Because me and uh, I know me and Luke play it um, every now and then, and we get and I love it. It's still fun to play. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that they're, they're taking that road of, we'll give it a few more years to, you know, work on it, to get it as good as possible, to put all the content out there. We just talked about that. Um, but I like that they're taking time and letting, you know, a game that is like Star Wars Battlefront 2 breathe, yeah. have that time, and then you have a game. So it's that rotation where it'll be Battlefront, Battlefield, Battlefront, Battlefield. I think that's a perfect rotation. And you look at Battlefield 1, it was absolutely amazing. It was such a good game. It was beautiful. Mm. It handled well. It was a ton of fun to play. So I'm glad that they're taking that time to really work on the game and put out good content. And I'm not saying, I know there's a lot of Call of Duty fans out there. I'm not saying that Call of Duty isn't still the, I, I think Call of Duty plays better than anything, in my opinion. Like, it's the best shooter there is. Yeah. Mechanically, I think that on this yearly basis, we're getting to where we're fatigued fatigued on it just like assassin's creed you know yeah. and thankfully they took a, some time off they did you see there's a lot of changes that they did with assassin's creed origins and, and i a, cannot uh, wait for it i'm excited so Unf pumped unfortunately october 27th pretty freaking stacked because you have mario you have assassin's creed and you have the fractured butthole and Shadow of War comes out in October too. If Is I it October twenty seventh, I don't think it's twenty seventh, but I know. It comes yes, out it does October. come out as well. But like on that day, oh, the day, the day is. I want to say it's all of those real quick. Let me. Yes, on the twenty seventh, it's Assassin's Creed. No, I'm sorry, I'm, I misspoke. It's Super Mario Odyssey, Assassin's Creed, and Wolfenstein. Mm. So you've got. All of those on that on that day. So that's going to be, you know, you've got everything for everybody. You like shooters? Boom, you got that. You like platformers? Boom, you got that. If you like... Whatever Wolfenstein is. Like. I'm saying shooters, Wolfenstein. Yeah. If you like Assassin's Creed, boom, oh, you yeah. got that. So it's a good year to be a oh, gamer. Yeah, definitely. Now, speaking of the Switch, take two. Staggering NBA 2K18 on the Switch with digital version releasing earlier. Uh, in its financial results for this quarter, Take-Two released a schedule of currently announced games as it relate to its financials. Curiously, the schedule makes a distinction between the digital version of NBA 2K18 on the Switch and the physical version that comes out on an unspecified date later in the fall. The digital version launches along the Xbox One, PS4, PS. PC, PS3, and Xbox 360 versions on September 19th, and the physical edition... <coughs> For the Switch also alone is simply listed as Fall 2017. All the other consoles will be available both digitally and physically on a September date. Now, what I gathered from this, I think Take Two is playing it smart. They're venturing into the Switch territory. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think it's very smart because they're like, it's cheaper us for do a digital release we don't have to worry about cards we don't have to you know worry about trying to fit all that information because 2k one of the biggest installs on our on our consoles oh yeah so they don't have to worry about that little little card uh none of that they're just doing it digitally i think that's going to tell them is it worth us putting in the effort you know we're we're good faith here we're going to put that out and see if it's going to be supported by the people that have their switches yeah now I'm excited for it. 
I think it's a great idea. I, I like getting to take NBA 2K on the road. Sign me up. You're not I, I'm in love. I'm in love here. But I hope it runs well. <laughs> that's that's the key. That that's my my next thing is like, is it going to run well? Is it going to do the thing that I need it to do? Oh yeah. You know, is it going to be on par? You know, it's of course underpowered compared to the other games. consoles and PC. But as long as it does the core functions and I can still do things with it, yeah. You know, it might not have my player mode. Okay, that's cool. Does it have play? You know, play now and I can play stuff. You know, it might not have my team. Okay, I don't really play that. So just, you know, having some of those functions that I really like to do, yeah, I'm good with. So oh, I'm yeah. excited for it. So if you've got a Switch, if you're looking to, you know, if you want to see them support the Switch, this is the time to start talking with your wallet here because everybody's like, oh, they need third party support. This is the time to oh, do yeah, it definitely. because if we don't have it, then people aren't going to come to the Switch. And the Switch is selling really well right now. And and that's what the Switch really needs is the back of these like third party games mm-hmm. and everything like that. So like you said, talk with your game. Yeah, you got to. So I, I'm going to. I'm gonna have it on PS4 and my Switch, <laughs> so I'm gonna have it where I can, you know, oh, oh I can play a game right now. And just yeah, when you're having to travel on a bus. Yeah, I have it. Boom, got it done. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Now, this is what I feel is missing in my life. I've gotten my NES Classic. Took forever to get. Oh yeah. Derek Daniel got it for me as a wedding present. Nice. Love it. But I couldn't buy it in stores. No. Couldn't get it. And that's what it seems like uh, is going to be the same thing with the Super NES Classic to be made later in August. The fever, the fervor, sorry, the fervor (laughs) for the Super NES Classic Nintendo's mini console hosting a buttload. I said buttload. It says buttload. Boatload. (laughs) Of 16-bit nostalgia is difficult to understate exactly exacerbated by the lack of legitimate pre-orders going up nintendo has confirmed today that pre-orders for the system will go up in late august in north america putting the rest concern that availability would simply be a free for all at release now earlier they're like oh walmart put up oh we got pre-orders oh this other company put up pre-orders all of this and then they had to back off they were like oh we don't have any pre-orders had to start refunding people and everything Mm mm-hmm that doesn't speak well for this. No, and I feel like it's going to be the same crap show we had with the last one, unfortunately. Because this is such a great idea. Mm-hmm. Such, But if it would only be executed as great as the idea yeah. is, then we would have no problems. Yeah. Everybody would have one. Nintendo would be making bukus of money. Yeah. But it's not executed well. That's the biggest issue. No, it's not. And here's my thing. NES Classic, couldn't find them. They were hardly produced. It was just bad overall. And it seemed like Nintendo was was making that happen on the production side of things. Uh, Nintendo has clarified that there will be a significant amount of SNES classics would be available at release. Though they shot away from any specifics. The biggest problem is that this is only going to be made for a year. Like, we're only going to get the ability to buy these in stores for a year mm-hmm. and they're having problems producing the switch right now. I think they're soon to be out of that woods, but they had problems producing the NES classic. They're going to have problems producing the SNES classic. So if you're wanting one of these, you're going to have to put the money down. You're going to have to stay up late. You're going to have to try to jump on that train. It's kind of mm-hmm. like when you're, uh, getting a comic-con ticket like you know san diego comic-con you got to be right there and it's gone in 13 seconds same thing with a switch like it was it was gone same way with the hotels for pencil card and you lock in and you're the last person to call for a room and you get it <laughs> so super nes classic will feature 21 games including the never before released star fox 2 and release on september 29th so if you're interested in that check it out Try to get one. If you do, congratulations. You're one of the chosen ones. And good luck getting it. Yes. Now, last segment of the show is a rotating segment. Yep. One of my favorite segments. Last week, 
we didn't have a show. So we didn't have a rotating segment. So we kind of pushed everything back. But that's okay. That's we just, okay. We'll we get it figured out. <clears throat> so far, we have a shout out to Netflix. That's called The Stand Ups. So you need to go home. You need to do homework. Watch The Stand Ups. Watch The Stand Ups. Stand Ups. They're funny. Not with George Constanza's? No. What? He said Constanza. Like, stand up. He said it, it sounded like oh. Costanza. Oh, we got you. I got you. Yeah. No, not them. Not they fun. are funny. They are. They are funny. Festivus <laughs> for the Don't rest of be a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> So shout out to Netflix is our one of our one of our rotating I'm I'm going over, so just in case you missed yeah. it. Stand ups is our shout out to Netflix, and within a few weeks we will be talking about that. Time for comics is our comic books one, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. We're gonna name which comic we're gonna be reading. And then number three is book club. We read question mark. And that's Thrawn. And which that will be next week's discussion. So uh, good. So good. I started so re- good. rereading it just to have a, a fresh recourser, if you will. And, push home, pull home. And Zach's voice raises just <laughs> slightly. And as you see, the, the tightening of his cheeks. Yes. And oh my God, just the way he talks. And it's beautiful. So good. It's so good. Number four is the animation superstation. Or the Weeaboo watched if we're watching anime. Uh, and that is Flashpoint Paradox. So this week we're going to be getting our our comic, our pick for the month. And that pick is Lock and Key. It is fantastic. I am getting ready to read it. I read over the uh, my, just the introduction. Mm-hmm. And it is about a young, young gentleman, yes. teenager, living his life. Mm-hmm. And he starts... Gaining the powers of his father. Yes. And so, you know, he has to transition his teenage life to also getting powers and, you know, thinking of whether he wants to follow in his father's footsteps or not. Yes. And I'm not going to give a lot away. Um, It's it's a little bit more than just, uh, you know, transitioning there. It's a little bit more of a adult book. Like it doesn't have anything like. Overly, but, yeah. overly sexual or anything, but uh, Joe Hill does an amazing job of. That's right, Joe Hill. Sorry, I'm trying to find the. It's an IDW book. Yeah, Joe Hill does an amazing job of writing it. And if you like supernatural stuff, if you like something that's a little bit different than your just normal everyday superhero comic, then this is one for you. I got the first one when I was up in Vancouver and could not put it down. Hmm. Uh, so I've, I've got a f- I've got a few other ones as well, yeah. but the first one it just I was just I just consumed it. it was like, <laughs> so it, it is going to be really really great, and I can't wait to talk about it oh, with yeah. you. It's going to be fun. I can't wait to talk about Thrawn next week. Oh, Oh, Oh. girl. Mm, Girl. Child. (laughs) Mm, Yes. Mm, Yes. So, guys, we hope you enjoyed the episode. If you haven't already, go over to iTunes. Go ahead and subscribe on iTunes and rate us. That you don't have to listen to on iTunes if you don't want to, yeah. but it helps us in the searching and everything, and ranks us higher so more people get into the podcast. So if you will go over there, give us a five star. If you want to give us a five star, that'd be awesome, and just help us out by doing that because we need your help. Yeah. You make this all work. We're just the ones talking. You make the world go round. Yes, for us definitely. So please go do that. We hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to get into the rotating. Oh, no. We've all, we got them all picked now. We're good. Next week we start the discussion. We start rolling them out. Yeah, and it's just gonna be fun from there. It's just gonna be a, a good time. Everybody, good time. Na, 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 na. Good time. Yes. Okay. So at the end of the show, the end of the show, we're here. We made oh, it. We made it. We we went through it. I got passionate. No, another one bites the dust. Yes. Now, everybody, if you want this early, you can go over to Patreon.com. Yep. We talked about it at the beginning of the show. Patreon.com slash NerdCame. You can get the podcast early. You can get it in audio form. You can get it in video form. Hey, you could even watch us live stream it starting next week. Now, that's only at a dollar. So, one dollar. And then, if you want to get the edited versions... Then you can pay past that. But that's a dollar, and you get to see a live stream. We won't talk to you, but you get to see a live stream. We do need to stress that when we do our live streams, this is just so everybody can watch it while we record it. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you know, 
unless you're saying, hey, your audio is messed up or something like that, we will not be able to yeah. talk to you because you, it takes away from what the show yeah. is. So it's going to be just like we're looking at the camera and acting like this is just going into the can. So that's going to be how it's going to be ran, everybody. So um, just letting everybody know up front. That will be starting next week. We will be putting up a post on our Patreon and letting everybody know, hey, we're going to be going live at this time. We're going to be doing this, that, and the other and going from there. So if you want to support us for a dollar or more, go over to patreon.com slash nerd cave and do that. Or you can wait. You can get it day by day, segment by segment, as I hit the microphone, until Friday, where we put out the whole thing as one video or audio format. And that's all free. You don't have to pay anything. And if you don't pay anything, that's that's cool, too. We love you anyway. Oh, yeah. Just share. Like, sharing is caring. That's that's very powerful, too. You know, If you don't got any money to toss us, share. Because that, that's the best way to get us out there. Because um, everybody has a friend that they know would love to talk nerdy stuff. And, you know, we might not talk about your subject that you like every week, but as nerdy as we are, we'll we usually there. cover it. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. So, if you will, comment down below. If you enjoyed the episode, what was your favorite part? I've missed you, my good friend. It's like Hello Darkness, my old friend. Oh, darkness, my old friend. This has been Zach. And Robbie. Have a week. If you enjoyed that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want gaming content, you can go over to Nerd Cave Gaming right there. If you want to support us, you can check out Patreon right there. If you want more videos, check them out right here. Go ahead, pick one of them. I wonder which one you're going to do. You're going to be cool. You pick any of them. All four of them. You'd be awesome.